Basement Lift Lewis Makers and Pico Pythonistas. It's Prof Gene, and this lesson will get that Pico playing sound. I'll show you several ways to hook up a speaker to a Pico. One, which you can use with any separately powered speaker that has an audio jack using just two pin gator wires. Another, which lets you use a low cost breadboard audio jack. And yet another using an external low cost amp that'll power a decent maker project speaker from the Pico's own power. The advantage being that you'll only need one power cable or battery attached to the Pico. You won't need separate power for the speaker. I'll also show you where you can copy and paste audio code from our CircuitPython tip sheet for playing WAV files and MP3 files. And I'll give you some files for downloading and testing. And I'll show you how you can download and use free Audacity software to save WAV and MP3 files in the proper format for CircuitPython playback. So let's get loud, CircuitPython style. And hey, if you're new to the channel, I'm a university professor with years of experience teaching physical computing in person to hundreds of students and online to thousands more. I've posted all the lessons from my own university course updated regularly, ordered to take someone from absolute newbie to really? Internet of Things and robotics in just a single semester. It's free to all. I do it simply because I love teaching students to build cool stuff and I want to reach as many people as possible. Teachers, oh, yeah, use in your yeah. own classes. Students love it. Dig in. Now back to sound play on the Pico. I'll demonstrate these techniques with a Pico 2W, but they should work with any Pico series board. The first options I'll show you are for using an externally powered speaker. That means a speaker that's plugged into its own power source or that runs off its own battery. And using these techniques, I can use any speaker with a standard audio plug. I used to use these techniques in the first few years of my class where each student was loaned one of these inexpensive hamburger speakers that you can buy online for about seven bucks. They've got a rechargeable battery inside, but I've seen the students use the same technique for much louder speakers, including guitar amps. Now all you need is two pin gator wires. I've attached the wire that'll be my audio out to GP14, and you'll also need a ground that you can connect to any of the Pico's grounds. Then just clip the ground wire to the base of the audio plug and the audio out to the tip of the plug, and you're ready to play. Now one downside to this approach is it's not very secure. It's, the alligator clips will easily fall off if jostled, but there's an option to improve this using a breadboard friendly audio jack. Now you do want to make sure that you get the right one, stereo or mono. Most speakers, including these little solo hamburger speakers, are stereo speakers, not mono. And stereo speakers won't work with mono jacks. Now you can tell what kind of speaker you have by looking at the plug. If it has two separation bands and three separate areas, it's a stereo plug. Just one band and two areas, it's a mono plug. Don't use a stereo speaker with a mono plug or vice versa. It likely won't work. Now here I'm using the more common stereo jack since all my speakers are stereo speakers. And if you flip the jack over, you'll see the ground pin in the center toward the hole where you push the plug in. And you'll also see two outer pins. They carry two stereo channels, but since we're using files that are saved in the mono rather than stereo format, you can use either one of these pins. These two inner pins here are disconnect switches. We don't wire anything to either of those pins. So I'm gonna plug my stereo jack into my breadboard with my ground coming as close to the rail as I can get without plugging it into the rail. And my outermost channel speaker will be on the far side of the breadboard. So this jack uses up the last five column rows. Push that in tight. Then I can wire up the middle ground pin to any of the Pico grounds in either the outer left or outer right back to my Pico audio out. And I'm gonna use GP14 again for this build. Then plug in your standard audio jack speaker. It's nice and secure and you're ready to play sound. Now here's the third option. And this is the one with the speaker that draws its power from the Pico so that we don't need a separate power cable or battery for the speaker. We do need an inexpensive amp though. So let me show you what I use in class. Now this option is great for beginner classes because there's no soldering involved. And I've tested a bunch of inexpensive speakers and I decided on these enclosed three watt four ohm speakers. They were the best sounding ones that I could find that were below $5 each. I'm showing the option with the JST plug attached. If you get this, you'll need a matching JST cable with stripped ends so that you can screw these into the terminal blocks on the amp, or you can buy this version without the JST connector at the end and then screw this directly into the amp. The only downside is this is less convenient if you need to swap out speakers, but you probably don't need to do that. And I pair this with an inexpensive PAM8302 amp. You need the amp here. Unlike those standalone speakers, these kind of speakers don't have their own amp and you need an amp with a Pico. And if you're wondering what an amp does, the Pico by itself only produces a very tiny audio signal. Now the amplifier boosts or amplifies the signal, so it's got enough power to push the speaker cone and move air, making the sound much louder. If you ever try to power a speaker with no amp, you probably won't even get a whisper. Now because my speaker has the JST cable end, 
I screw a matching two-wire JST cable into the terminal blocks, red to plus, black to minus, then I can plug the speaker into the amp, and the board connections come out of this three-wire JST jack. Now when we work with Circuit Playground boards, we plugged in a JST connector that had three alligator clips on it, but for the Pico, we replace this with a connector with three pins. These plug right into the breadboard, hook the ground wire to any Pico ground. For the signal wire that carries audio out, we'll continue to use the GP14 pin, and power here can go to the V-Bus power. And that's the setup. Now, regardless of the three setups that you use, we can use the exact same code. So before we sling our code, let's get some wave and MP3 files so we got something to play. So, amazing ones, I've got some files for this lesson in our usual place. Open a browser and head to the URL bit.ly slash circuitpython dash school dash files, all lowercase. And when you head there, you can scroll down and find the folder named Sounds. Right-click on that and select Download. Yours is probably downloading to your Downloads folder. I'm going to save mine to the desktop. Then find that Sounds folder you just downloaded. If you use Chrome, it might be a zip file, so you may have to double-click that to unzip it. And then inside the Sounds file, you'll see a bunch of files that are WAV and MP3 file types. You can work with any of these files that you want. And if you're tight on space, only copy over the ones you want. I'm going to click and drag the entire Sounds folder and drop it into my CircuitPy volume. And then you can open up your CircuitPy volume and look inside the sounds folder and we see all our files inside. Now remember, our audio files are on our board in a folder named sounds, all lowercase. So we're going to need to set up our code to refer to this folder and we need to spell any file name that we want to play exactly as you see it here with the exact case and spelling, otherwise our code won't work. So now let's write code to play WAV files first. I'm going to launch PyCharm, by far my favorite editor in CircuitPython. If you're not using PyCharm, I've got a lesson on how you can set this up in our course playlist. And I'm inside our code.py file. I don't need any of the old code that I had in here, so I'm going to highlight it all and delete it. And I'm going to return to our browser, and I'm going to get the code we need from our CircuitPython tip sheet. And everyone's welcome to use that. You can find it at bit.ly slash CircuitPython, capital C, capital P, dash tip, dash sheet. Now, this is the tip sheet that I allow all my students to use when taking challenges and tests in class. It's just got all the configuration code in here. They still need to know how to write and apply code logic. But frankly, many times when I'm configuring different components, I'll just look it up as well. There's really little value in committing the setup code to memory. Now with our tip sheet open, I'm going to search for audio, and the first thing that shows up is how to play sound on the CPB, or Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. That's the board that my students started their course with, but I'm going to scroll past this, and then I see setup for the Pico, which we're using now. So I'm going to highlight and copy this code, then head back to PyCharm and paste it in. And the board statement here has the red squigglies of anger under it, but we know what that means. I haven't imported my board library, so I'll do that now. And I'm also going to import Time, although I don't think I'm going to use time in these first examples. And let's take a quick look at the code we pasted in here. Now we get the PWM audio out class from the audio PWM IO library, and we rename this to audio out for consistency with code from other boards that don't use PWM IO. Boards that don't use PWM audio, that's the pulse width modulation audio use a class called audio out. So by renaming PWM audio out to audio out, it just makes our naming conventions consistent, which is nice if we start writing code for different boards. Now you'll use this code that I just pasted in every time you work with the Pico and audio. So it's not really important to know much more than this sets up Pico audio, but to go through it quickly, to play WAV files, we import the WAV file class from the audio core library. This expands CircuitPython's vocabulary so it now knows about commands to work with WAV audio. Then down here we call the audio out class, which is like a blueprint to set up our audio that's on our board. And by passing in board.gp14, we tell CircuitPython, hey, there's going to be some audio coming out of pin GP14. And we'll use the name audio, that's our variable name here, whenever we want to refer to our audio controlling object. So this is all we need for setup. The only thing you're likely to change is the pin name if you've plugged your speaker into a different pin on your board. But with our audio set up, let's get the rest of the code we need to play WAV files. So we'll head back to the tip sheet, and just below our setup code, we've got the code to play WAV file. So I'm going to highlight this whole code here, copy it, head back to PyCharm, and paste it in. Now for my students that started off with the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, this is the exact same code we used earlier in this course. First, ultra important, make sure that this path variable has the name of the folder that has our sounds. Ours is called sounds, all lowercase. Make sure that you got the slash at the end that divides the folder from the name of the file. Then down below, we've got our play sound function. It's a function named play sound. We pass it in a string. That's the name of the file that we want to play. We open that file as a raw binary file named wave underscore file. 
Then we convert it to a wave file. We call our audio objects play function, and we pass in wave, and we start playing. And by saying while audio dot playing with this pass statement in here, we just wait around until the file's done playing. Cool, let's try it out. Down here, I'm gonna call that play underscore sound function, and in between parentheses and double quotes, I'm gonna pass in the name of a WAV file. And I'm gonna go over to the finder to find the name of a file I wanna play. Let's take a look in that sounds folder. Oh, I'd like a little bit of encouragement, so I'm gonna use encouragement1.wav. Little pro tip, on a Mac, if you click the file and press return, you're in rename mode, but you can command A to select all, command C to copy. I've got the whole file name on my clipboard now. I'll head back to PyCharm, paste in between those double quotes. And I'll copy this play sound call, paste it down below, and change encouragement 1 to encouragement 2 here. Now I always like to put a print statement above this just to make sure that things are working, so I'll say print playing wave files. I'll open my terminal. I need to find my board's location, so I'll say to space double dash list. Here's the Mac version. I'm going to copy this. Then at the percent prompt, type in to space, paste this back in, to launches. This gives me a window on what's executing on my CircuitPy board. And if I click back in my code, type Command S on Mac, Control S on Windows, my code will save and run. Code or code not, there is no try. A code monster you have become. Skilled you are. And oh, look at that. The wrinkly green sage, Master Yoda himself, just wished you luck. So now that we can play WAV files, why don't we learn to play MP3? So I'm going to highlight and comment out all this code specific to playing WAV files. Command slash and PyCharm. We'll put common characters in front of all these lines. And I also don't need this from audio core import WAV file statement up here because it's specific to WAV files and I'm going to play MP3. So I'm going to command slash here. Then let's head back over to our CircuitPython tip sheet. And below the wave play, we've got mp3 file play. And we've got to import this mp3 decoder function from the audio mp3 file. So I'm going to highlight this, copy it, head back to PyCharm, and I'll paste this just above the import wave file that we just commented out. And then I'll head back to our browser with our tip sheet. I've already got our path set up, so I can skip that, but I'm going to copy all the code below this. Then below the path, I'm going to paste in all this code. Now, my students have already played MP3 files on their Circuit Playground Bluefruits, but just to remind you, we first got to set up an MP3 decoder. That's what we do in these three lines here. It's just a software object that can play MP3 files, but we need to set our file name to the name of a valid file that exists inside the path where our MP3 files are. So I'm going to head back over to the Finder and find the name of a file I'd like to play. And ooh, there's one called nice work. So I'm going to use that file and I'll use my copy name trick, which is press return, command A, command C. Head back over to PyCharm and paste this in between the quotes as the file name. So again, you're setting up an MP3 decoder, a software object that can play MP3 files, and you've got to initially pass it in a valid MP3 file name. It's not going to play this file, but it is going to use it to set up the MP3 decoder. Common mistakes for students are to forget to create this MP3 decoder, to pass it a name that doesn't exist on your CircuitPy volume, or if your files are named in a folder that has a name other than sounds, make sure you change the path name. Then we've got a new function down here called play underscore MP3, but it works pretty much the same way. You pass it in a string, which is the name of a file. It reads in that file name. MP3 files are played inside of the decoder, so the setup's a little bit different. We add the file we read into the decoder's file property, but we still have a while audio dot playing in here with pass inside to make sure the entire file plays before moving on with our code. Then I'm going to call my play underscore mp3 function, passing in the string, pasting in nice-work.mp3. That's that file name I just copied. I'll put a print statement up here that says playing mp3 files. Open my terminal back up. TO's already running, and I'll command S, control S on Windows to save, and my code runs. Nice work. Haha, <laughs> and nice work, Pythonista. Want to hear that again? We can just add a space to the end of any of these lines here. It doesn't impact our code, but it resets changes so we can save again. Nice work. Now, you might have noticed some clicks when this sound plays. My students learned that that's an artifact of the fact that neither the Circuit Playground Bluefruit nor the Raspberry Pi Pico has what's called a DAC, a digital audio converter. Now, my students learned how to minimize those pops by using the CircuitPython audio mixer library, but there's even more of a bonus coming. My students are going to get a low-cost DAC that they can wire up to Raspberry Pi Pico, and that's going to get rid of all these pops. The deck is also going to enable us to play really cool sounds using the CircuitPython SynthIO library. All that's coming. Now, one more thing I'd like to mention before we finish up is how you can format your own WAV and MP3 files for playback in CircuitPython. Now, CircuitPython likes the following settings for WAV files, mono, not stereo, with a sample rate of 22 kilohertz, and 16-bit or smaller format. Now, don't worry if these terms don't mean anything to you. You can download free software called Audacity at audacityteam.org. Then you can load up just about any audio file, select export audio from the file menu, and save it to your computer. All the settings you need show up in the export dialog box. 
select wave mono sign 16 bit and export and you should be good now a lot of makers prefer mp3 files wave files are uncompressed so they have higher sound quality but frankly in most maker projects mp3 files are fine and they save a lot of space because they're compressed now the circuit python standard for mp3 files is to save them as mono again with a sample rate of 22 kilohertz or smaller and the standard quality should be fine exporting mp3s in audacity should show these options select them as you save and you should be golden but pico pythonista you should feel great about your mad audio skills up top i'm going to put a comment in here i'm going to name this pico underscore sound underscore play dot pi and i'm going to copy this name and save it to my circuit python school folder always make sure that you close that outermost tab and folks once again there was big learning in this lesson we learned three different ways that we can easily hook up a speaker to the Raspberry Pi Pico using alligator clips, using a breadboard friendly audio jack, or using an amp. And we learned simple code that we could use to play WAV files and MP3 files. And we learned how to format WAV and MP3 files for playback in CircuitPython, and that you could use free Audacity software to save with those options. If you enjoyed this, let me know, tell your friends, and continue to stick around because there's more goodness to come. Now get out there and make something awesome.